We've just had two big Pioneer tournaments, PT Brussels and PT Nagoya. We're gonna talk about some of the cards where if you aren't using them, it might be a good time to sell. And the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fan fight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. I'm Joel. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel are Magic. We have got a lot of Pioneer to cover and what you should be selling, so we're going to jump right into it. But first, if you wouldn't mind, by the end of the video, if you like it, hit that subscribe button. Joel, I have to itch my nose. Okay, itch your nose while I tell them. Also, that we have a Patreon giveaway going right now. The first five people to go and sign up for our Patreon are going to get a free t-shirt. I'm going to send it right to you. I'm going to get your size. I'm going to send you a free t-shirt. Go sign up at our Patreon. The link is down in the description below. Jake, you ready to talk about Pioneer? I wish I had just itched my nose before, but yeah, let's get into it. So swapping over, we have got a list starting with Walking Ballista, as you can see, of cards that it is time to get rid of if you're not using them. Right, that's the big clause, is if you aren't using it, if it's not currently in a deck, if it's just sitting there, I think a lot of the cards that we're going to talk about today, these are cards that I think have a lot of reprint equity as far as like Wizards of the Coast is concerned. If they were to make a Pioneer Master set, or if they were to make a product that is uh, sold kind of like a secret layer direct to the consumer. Right. Um, you know, if they were to make a Pioneer Master set, these are the kind of cards that I think would show up. And yeah, that's what we're talking about today. So Walking Ballista, this is a card that's like $30. Um, yeah, if you aren't using it, if you are an EDH player and you have multiple copies, Get rid of it. Just turn it into something else. Buy a card that you want or something that you think is going to go up in price because at this point we just saw two big tournaments and Walking Ballista didn't have a huge impact in those tournaments. So it's safe to say that it and the Heliod combo are probably fine. So uh, as, as far as like when I say fine, I mean like not broken. Like it's something that is a contained combo. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this card could be reprinted or... I don't think it's going to be banned. It's probably at its ceiling. It seems like we're always talking about now's the time to buy this card. These cards are super low and we never really touch on, all right, it's probably time to make an exit on the, these cards because they may be as high as they're going to get and are possibly in danger of a reprint. We're not telling you what to do with your cards. Sell your whole collection or don't sell your whole collection or sell pieces of it. We don't, we don't care. really care. Yeah. <laughs> but some of these are cards that we personally will be using this opportunity to exit on. And so we just want to kind of to communicate what our thoughts were on those Soul Scar Mage. Look at this. Yeah, this is that's a card a, that's, that's popping a good way up of it. in yeah. every red deck. And it's from a set, I'm on Ket, that was opened so much with people chasing rares. Uh, people chasing, no, treasure cards, was it? Yeah, yeah. People going after the invocation cards. Um, you know, this came after, you know, Kaladesh and Aether Revolt. And now we have even more, at, or Battle for Zendikar before those. Um, and then we had invocations. And this is a card that, you know, it Red didn't really do super well in these tournaments so yeah soul scar mage is a four of in all of these decks right now if you aren't using them if you don't have red put together if you're playing a different deck it might be a good time just to get rid of these just they could end up kind of like falling falling to the wayside and then they're not even worth you know the five or six bucks that they're currently worth right now right so yeah, exactly it's probably yeah. a great time to sell those this card this is at a great all, I mean, this is at a huge high right now because Spirits just did so, so well. People are going to be looking to pick up these as quickly as possible because it has proven itself as a top eight deck. It's a house of a card. If you're sitting on them from back when, you know, Eldritch Moon, I believe this is that is that Eldritch? Yeah, Moon? that's what this is. This is, this is Eldritch Moon. And play. Also, also Selfless Spirit was in this block. So right. honestly, yeah. this is just like any Spirits pieces. If you have any of the pieces from the Spirits deck, any of them like Spell Queller or Selfless Spirit, um, it, the ones that have a high price point, again, if you're not using them. Yeah, exactly. Unload yeah. them, turn them into three or four awesome EDH cards for your for your best commander deck. Imrical, this showed up as a one of in a lot of decks. Yeah, this was in the Delirium deck, yep. and 
What's interesting about that Delirium deck is it's a Traverse the Olvenwald where you use Traverse to search for a card to put in your hand. And right. Emrakul is only a one of in the deck because you can go search for it. Exactly. So it's it, right now the card is like pushing $40. This deck could be a flash in the pan. It could be a deck we don't see again. It um, could also become a standard. But a card absolutely. like this as a mythic is is at a big high and it's it's a good move right now i would say yeah and it's a good it's a good target for reprints if they're looking to put a set together and they're like what are some big splashy money mythics right that we can put into the set that have been impactful and pioneer this is one of the cards i would look at first and yeah like it's it's almost 40 dollars. sell it if you aren't using it if you are using it you know go go ham with it i hope the 1313 13 wins you all the games. Yeah, I mean, but look at Ikoria. I have two that I'm going to be selling. I'm just like, I don't need these right, right. now. Ikoria is coming up. Lair of the Behemoths, you know, Eldrazi Secret Lair, not out of the question. You know, that's that's uh, that exists now, and you really have to watch for it. Ugin Secret Lair, you get uh, the Spirit Dragon and uh, Reality Shift Uncommon. And I mean, they could know, sell that for forty nine ninety five, and it would fly off the shelves. Right. Yeah, I, I, exactly. I tell you, I could tell you a hundred percent, it would fly off the shelves. There's there's no possible way people would be buying all ten of them. Right. Pioneers bump this already expensive card up a little bit more, and you know. If, if you're looking to unload them, look at these uncommons. This strictly better shock that no one's running for any reason other than it has more text on it than shock is a almost $5 uncommon right now. If you're sitting on these, I mean, I just, I don't see them going up anymore. I could see Wild Slash being reprinted in a set like Layer of the Behemoths or Zendikar when, coming yeah. up. Dude, and whenever, yes, it absolutely could, or whenever they make one of these master sets, there's always the question of what kind of good uncommons are in the set? Where is the path to exile? What is the serum visions of the set? What's the inquisition of Kozilek of the set? What's the lightning bolt of the set? The list goes on and on. You always want a master set to have you know, three or four good uncommons. A lot of them are going to be chafe or they're going to be good specifically and limited, but you're going to want uncommons that have eternal playability. And this card has already proven itself. I mean, until um, Pioneer gets lightning bolt, like straight up lightning bolt, right. which most likely it's not going to. Um, yeah. You know, this is going to be like the best choice. Yeah, that would be wild. Dig through time. Here's one. Uh, I was saying that some of these are personally ones that we're sitting on. I probably am sitting on four or five, six play sets of Dig Through Time, and it's time to unload those. Yeah, man. Uh, a lot of Demir Inverter at these two um, players tours. Right. A lot. Yep. And a if they think that this Inverter. is too much of an enabler, I mean, this is one that could possibly get banned. Never mind a reprint or some kind of secret layer action. This card has dodged bans since the beginning of the entire, you know, format. And so, how I long mean, does that imagine, happen? Imagine at the end of, of your turn, you have, you've done, you have the inverter in hand, you need the Thassa's Oracle, EOT, you're digging through time, you're exiling your yard so that you're casting this at, you know, as low as two. And then you're just finding your combo pieces right. for your next turn. You're just like well, ready to go. And the thing I is, mean, the thing that it also huge. does for inverter decks is what you said. It empties the graveyard so that when they do cast inverter, they have fewer cards that their library becomes and makes it easier for one Thassa's Oracle to achieve the goal. So much synergy. Yeah. While we're Again, talking about that deck, I mean, yes. inverter of truth oracle of thassa which you'll see uh, in a little bit it these cards were you know dirt cheap and now they've absolutely exploded everybody's aware of this card everybody's aware of this deck it's the talk of the town it dominated one of the two pt top eights i believe it was nagoya the top eight was five like, out of eight right five out of eight that's ridiculous that's the kind of numbers that a deck puts up that puts cards on watch lists. I'm not sitting here trying to fear monger bans. I'm I not do sitting not here want trying it. to say I don't it needs want to any of these cards. Uh, yes. Right. I think that if they if they go for a ban, and I don't mean to trample over you. No, if no. they go for a ban, it's really gonna be um 
it's going to be bad for this format because nobody's going to want to engage in it. Nobody's going to want to invest in decks if they just immediately go and say, no, we're going to ban Dig Through Time. This card was on a watch list. Right. You know, uh, we were fine with there being a combo, but we don't want it to be you know, super easy. I could see them banning Dig Through Time before they ban Inverter of Truth or Thassa just right, because exactly i mean make it synergy. so that you naturally have to find it to win on turn five because you could turn four your inverter turn five your but Thassa. then anticipate opt all of the cards that sure. let you dig you know sure i just i think it's a good way to say is my deck good for pioneer or is my deck bad for pioneer i think it's a fine deck jace friends prodigy what is this card even up to right now yeah, this card's around like $25 to $30, but it's one of those cards, again, um, if you're not playing that deck, just like get rid of it. It yeah. was an, an FTV set. Again, it's another card that has really good reprint equity if they were to decide, you know, let's make a master set. A lot of the time we're going to say that with, with these cards, but that's really what it comes down to. Are they likely to be reprinted? What mythics would they target? for reprints in these sets and you don't want to be holding those cards when they do get reprinted or announced or spoiled because then you're going to lose all of that money that otherwise was just sitting in a binder you could have cashed in it really is about with this game if you want to grow your collection and you want to do it well you have to lock in your gains when you can and right. you don't want to be too greedy you know if you if your cards increased by three or four hundred percent value just like sell it buy it again when it when it's reprinted or you know if it bottoms out if it's a card I'm that's really on, dear to you keep I'm, it in your deck you i'm know? sitting on two sets of green ley lines that i fell into exactly this trap well it's a great deck you've got to have the mana dorks surely they won't ban it thursday i'm sitting there going huh I'm banning next day i wonder if i should go ahead and take this down sat on them yeah. now now they're nowhere near what they were um i have all those oracle. oath of nissa's dude same right. story exactly i have like 50 copies of oath of nissa that i was like oh my god the card made it in pioneer well nope it's too good in pioneer it is banned and gone get it out of here right exactly here's a really good card in standard wait you pioneer. just skipped over yeah it's skipped that over. yeah i skipped over it's thassa's oracle oh, i mean it's, okay we right. talked about that deck ad nauseum. Combo piece. Yeah, yeah it's a combo yeah. piece in the deck. I doubt that that would be the card that was banned if they try and bring that combo down in power, but we'll see. Uro is a card that's not going to get banned because I'll tell you, I've played it a lot. It feels very fair on the uh, power level of what's being printed now. It's kind of a, you know, it's a different kind of Risen Reef that also gives you some back end um you know finisher-esque playability to it uh it's a mythic i think it's going to continue to go up in price it might at the end of its standard life cycle which is more than a year off might lose some value but this is a card to me that is going to be perpetually pioneer playable i doubt i don't think yet it's broken into modern but you know no it's it's being played in modern a little bit and i i think it's one of those cards that i agree with you it's fair it seems really busted but i think the price for a set that's currently in print like a standard set the price on this card is really high and as we keep going we might see that the price of the card starts to decline so again it comes down to if you aren't using it if it's not in a deck Move it now, right. rock in the cash. This is one that you could potentially roll the dice on and wait until we see what the world's results are going to be. That's going to be our first look at very high level standard play, um, I believe. And so this is a card that if it top eights or if it wins that tournament, it could go up and that might be a great time to exit. But other than that, I mean, there's no time like the present. Sylvan Karyatid. I mean, look at this card that was probably under a dollar, and now it's now it's just broken out like crazy. Well, in standard, the card was great. Yeah. Um, it got played, you know, a little bit in modern, but really, it's just one of these cards that it's so good for ramp, and the fact that it says hexproof, that's why the card is as expensive as it is. Right. Uh, it blocks all of the early aggro decks and is able to produce mana, so it's it's really 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 strong yeah absolutely and it's at you know it's at it's like the 10 to 12 bucks right yeah it's just like 
Niv Mizzet. Right yeah, get rid we of actually it. talked about Niv Mizzet last week and the decks that uh, old Mizzet is popping up in. But again, this is one that did pretty well at the Pioneer tournament. It's a mythic in a set that's not in print, you know, or or not the active in print set. I mean, it's yeah. It's probably time to move this one if you're just sitting on some copies of old five coster. Here. I just think like a deck like this, it could just be in the long term sense of the game or or the format a flash in the pan. It's yeah. just like it's cute. I like what's going on with bring delight in the deck, um, being able to get Niv Mizza in your hand and fill your hand up is really strong. I, oh, yeah. I think it's really good, but it's just like. I don't know. It seems like there's a, a lot of RNG. Like, what if you don't draw the right cards, or what if it's a big whiff? It seems a little bit slow. So, I don't know. I'm yeah. excited to see where, where the format goes. Yeah, really am, and I think that's the bottom line. Pioneer has got us super pumped. It is a diverse format outside of Demir Inverter being super popular right now. We'll see how the meta shifts to deal with that deck. And we'll see how it continues to develop. It was yeah. super exciting to have high-level play of this all weekend. I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Yeah, man, I, I did too. And I'm really excited to see what happens with Pioneer. And also, just don't let your cards just sit in the binder. If they're not doing anything or... I mean, if you don't care about the financial side of this game, then, you know, whatever. But if right. you're looking to convert a low-end cardboard into high-end cardboard, make sure you check your bulk. Yeah. Uh, go look through, see if there's anything that's just kind of sitting there that was once a dollar that's now 20 bucks. That's the big thing is we're not trying to, you know, play the stocks and MTG finance. We're just trying to take the cards that are worth a lot that you're not playing with and encourage you to turn those into dope commander cards or foiled out blinked versions of your commander yeah. and things like that at the time when it's appropriate. We really appreciate you watching. Like we said, if you wouldn't mind hitting like, hitting subscribe down there, it really helps us out. If you're interested in our Patreon, do not forget we are doing the giveaway right now. Free t-shirt coming at you. Tell me your size. I'll send you a free t-shirt with our a logo on it. A t-shirt will keep you warm. It Absolutely. Will, it will make sure that you are not af affected completely by the sun. That's it. He nailed it. That's exactly what a t-shirt's for, Jake. That was very good. I appreciate that. If you want to hang out with us, we're streaming most Tuesday and Thursday evenings over on Twitch. Jake, I think that's the whole spiel. I'm tapped out. I'm tapped out, man. We'll catch you later.